Hey everybody, Stephanie Mitchell here. So excited to be here with you today for this fun and quick marketing training. Now, um, I haven't gone live on my Facebook page in a long time. It's been, I don't even know, like probably more than a month, but I, I used to go live on my page like every single week and then I kind of paused it. And um, recently I'm like, you know what? I miss my people. I miss chatting with you. I miss doing these kind of like live trainings with you. COVID has got me feeling kind of like a little bit down, a little bit lonely sometimes. So the best way that I know when I'm working online and everything is like on my computer all the time, I'm like, the best way to make it feel like I'm actually surrounded by people and have things going on around me and actually can connect with other business owners is through these Facebook Lives. So this is fun. I'm so excited to be here. I'm very pumped up. I've got a ton of energy today. Um, so if you're here with me, please jump into the chat and say hi so I can see that you're there. Give you a shout out. Um, Tracy's here. Hi, Tracy. Thank you so much for joining me. So happy to have you. And Mel is also here. Hey, Mel. Good morning. So, so, so happy to have you. Um, so uh, yes, if you're here, please give me a shout in the comments. I love to see who's here. So in case you don't know me, most of you probably do, but in case you don't know me, I'm Stephanie Mitchell. I'm a marketing trainer and coach for beauty business owners. So if you are a hairdresser, an esthetician, waxer, if you do lashes or brows, makeup artist, permanent makeup artists, spray tanners. I know I'm missing some of you out there. Um, I am all about helping you to grow through online marketing, having a great online presence, um, helping to grow your clients' health through online marketing, to tell your story, and just really to build your business and your revenue through everything that you do online. And today is special because I'm chatting about something I haven't talked about in a while, which is websites. Today, I'm chatting with you about five secrets to create a high converting website that turns your visitors into clients. So if you have a website, but you haven't given it any love in a while, maybe you got it built a few years ago or a few months ago and you just haven't really touched it and you feel like mm, it could be better. And I'm not really sure if it does the trick of attracting clients or converting clients, this is for you because you're going to walk away with five really practical things that you can do to really just make your website super high converting, beautiful, tell your personal story, and really to help you get found so that more and more people in your town know about your beauty business and book with you. Your website is really, I'm really talking really fast today, aren't I? <laughs> your website, I say it's the beating heart of your online presence. It's so important. It's often overlooked and I wanna make it really easy for you today to walk away with these five things of like, okay, I can do this. Take these ideas, put them on your website. And if you don't have a website yet, um, uh, I'm gonna teach you the three things to get started on a website today because you need a website. So let me see who else is here. Uh, Giovanni's here, thank you so much for being here, Giovanni. Tori Shea is here. Hi, Tori Shea. Tori Shea is one of my students in the Facebook formula, so it's so awesome to have you here. Um, and guys, if you are out there watching, let me know in the comments, do you have a website? Just type yes or no if you have a website. That's question number one. So type yes, I have a website, or no, I don't. If you don't, that's okay. And then if you do have a website, second thing I wanna ask you, jump in the comments and tell me, on a scale of one to 10, how much do you love your website? Like 10 would be, oh my gosh, I just got it done or I got it done last year and I absolutely love it. I'm freaking in love with my website, that's amazing. Um, maybe three would be something like, mm, not really sure if I love it, I wanna fix it, I wanna update, but I'm not really sure like what exactly to do to update it. I, I feel like it could do a better job of maybe telling my story of selling my services and I'm not really sure how to get it there. So it, just tell me on a scale of one to 10 what you're feeling right now about your website. Okay, um, all right, who's here? Alexia's here. Hey, Alexia, Stacy. Um, 
Alexia says, no, I don't have a website. That's okay, Alexia. I'm gonna, you can still use these five ideas for when you do have a website. And at the end, I'm gonna share with you three things that you can do to get it started this week because websites, so important. Um, Stacy does have a website. Tori Shea doesn't have a website yet, but I know she's working on it. I chatted with her last week about this. Uh, Roosby doesn't have a website yet. Uh, Victoria does. Um, okay, so let's get to the numbers. On a scale of one to 10, how much do you love your website? Tracy's a four, Carlene's a seven. Victoria didn't give a number, but she just says, meh. <laughs> I get that. I actually update my website a few times a year, and usually why I update it is because I'm feeling meh. It just, it always gets put on the back burner, right? You always say, I'm gonna do this, and then things come up, and it just gets, Put aside and then before you know it, it's been a while. Um, Stacy says six. Uh, Mel says yes, 10. Mine is always being tweaked. I love that, Mel. You are awesome. Um, Mel actually sent me an email. I saw your email, Mel, from yesterday about um, Google. So she was sharing with me um, what her Google Analytics look like. People that, so Mel, has a um, waxing studio. She especially um, waxing and facial studio, and she especially um, specializes in male clients. And she gets like hundreds of website visitors a day from Google. So people are finding her, searching for things like I'm guessing uh, manscaping, uh, male facials, um, you know, facials nearby, um, uh, that kind of thing. So she. That's a great, great reason to have a website that's um, that's uh, tweaked for Google and really optimized is that it helps you get found by hundreds of people. So thanks so much for sharing that, Mel. Um, Rachel says, no website yet, but wanting to do one ASAP. I love that. You're gonna walk away with so many ideas for when you are. So you're starting with a blank slate, Rachel. That's amazing. And um, these five ideas I'm gonna share with you, they're gonna help so much. Um, okay, Giovanni says, I don't have a website, but I want one soon. Okay, awesome. I think that this is going to help you so much. Um, and guys, just wanna say, I'm so, so, so appreciative of you being here. I love doing these trainings. If you have questions while I'm talking about these five secrets, please jump in and ask them. That's actually the number one reason why I love doing these live trainings. Otherwise I could just record a YouTube video, right? The reason why live trainings like this are so special to me and I hope helpful to you is that we can interact. So like if I'm saying something and you have questions, you can tell me what you're thinking, that kind of thing. So if you have questions at all, um, please jump in. I'm here to answer them. I wanna help you get the most out of this training and it's not gonna be super long, I promise, even though I have a habit where I can't stop talking sometimes. <laughs> uh, Victoria says, I'm also an esthetician. Where are you? I just closed my in-person services. Um, I'm guessing that she's talking to Mel. So Mel's in California. I personally am in Ottawa, Canada. Um, and I'm sorry that you had to close your in-person services, Victoria. It's, it's a tough, tough time. Um, and just one of those, I mean, we always say look at the silver lining, but one of the silver linings of doing that is, you know, having a little bit more time to get those things like your website and your social media and all of that stuff under control and updated while you do have this like down period for when things open back up. Um, so Jen says she does have a website. Love that. Okay. Um, and then Stace says, I need to chat with you later. Would love to have more clients in my spa room to facial. Yeah, sure. Send me send me an email or a message on Facebook, Stacy. Okay, so let's get into it. I do have a little um, a little document here because you know I like to stay organized. And whenever I come on live and do these kind of trainings, I'm always nervous of like, am I gonna forget something? Because if you've ever done live video, you know that you tend to get a little bit nervous and start to ramble and then forget what you were saying. So I've got a doc right in front of me to help me, you know, stay on track and make sure that you guys are getting the most out of this. And um, without further ado, let me jump right in. Okay, so I said this before, but really 
the core and the beating heart of your online presence is your website. So your website, it can be super simple. It doesn't need to be complicated, um, but if it has these five things that I'm gonna share with you today, it's gonna to do a much better job of converting all those people who are going to your website into actual paying customers. So people who are booking with you, people who are spending money with you, who become loyal clients, who come back to see you. Um, so that's what I'm gonna be sharing today. But just to start off, like as an intro, Having a social media, like having an Instagram profile, having a Facebook profile is amazing. Social media has done so much to help promote your business, to really help the beauty industry, to share your work with more people. But having a social profile is not enough. You really do need a website. A website is going to help you get found on Google. So like I was telling about Mel who said she's had like 69,000, I think it was, visitors on her website since January. I've had about 140,000 people visit my website since January. Um, you, when you have a website, more people will find you. Hands down, one of the best ways to get found is through having a Google presence and having a website so that people can search for you and find you, etc. So, that's one reason. Second reason, you really want to share your story with more people. Just showing pictures of your work on Instagram and having a gallery of like reviews and photos and stuff is so important. But having a single place where you can really tell your story of why you started your business, the story of you really sharing like your heart and soul in a single place that is so powerful. And I'm going to chat with you in just a minute about how to share more of your story, but the best place to kind of really completely share your whole story as a business owner and really um, share your heart and soul, which is what's really going to help people connect with you is on your website. And don't forget that people are doing their research. People are researching you. When they find you on Instagram, they're going to do a Google search before they book with you. They're going to type in um, Melissa's Skin Studio or um, Balayage by Ashley, um, they're going to search for you. They want to know about your reviews. They want to see if you have a website. They want to know a little bit more. Um, when they research you, you want to make sure that they find your website. So another really important reason to have your website. And um, so if you don't have one yet, I'm going to share those secrets with you for getting it started. And if you do have one, Take these ideas and this week make a list of things, maybe like a little checklist if you're like me and super organized and you like having like a list of things to do every day. Um, take some notes and you're going to walk away today with like, okay, this is how my website can do the having li heavy lifting for me. Um, okay, without further ado, let me get into those five secrets to making a website that converts visitors into clients. Um, let me just see. Stacy says you're frozen. Um, am I frozen? Can you, I always get paranoid about this when I do live trainings. Can you guys see and hear me? Just, can someone just give me a yes in the comments if you can see and hear me? If you can't, that would be concerning. <laughs> um, but I hope, I hope we're good. Okay. Without further ado, I'm going to go into it. I'm just going to wait to see if you guys leave a comment so that you can. Okay. So Tracy says you can see and hear me. Great. Okay. Five secrets to making a website that converts your visitors into clients. So all those people who are visiting your website, what can you actually do on your website to make sure that they book with you and turn into clients? So I'm going to share five of my favorite ways to do it. Number one, have an about page on your website. This, I have like in my four years of doing marketing for beauty businesses, you can bet that I have seen hundreds, if not thousands of salon and spa and beauty business websites. So many of them are anonymous. Like so many of them are just like this random website. You don't know anything about the person behind the business, they haven't introduced themselves, you can't find pictures of them, you can't find even their name. Even sometimes when there is an about page, sometimes the about page is just telling 
about what the salon does or what the beauty business does without saying like, hey, I'm Stephanie. I'm the owner of Sunny Storm Salon. Let me tell you more about me. People will choose you. Clients will choose you and book with you. Number one reason, not because of how talented you are. That is part of it, but it's not the whole story. Not because of what your pricing is, not because of um, you know where you're located. Number one reason people will choose you and not just choose you, but come back to you and really it will be your ideal clients choosing you is because of you, because of your personality, because of how they feel like they would be able to relate to you, your energy. Really, it's that bond. It's that mesh. And you know that with your best clients. Like you guys have that connection. They understand you. You understand them. They really come back to you because of your personality. That needs to shine through on your website. So do not hide on your website. Do not um, think that just sharing your business name and your services and all of that is enough. You need to shine through on your website. And the best way to do that is just have a page on your website called About Me. Include a photo of you. Um, Include your bio, like a little bit about you, both as a beauty professional, but then make it personal too. Talk about like if you've got, you know, kids or pets, um, talk about some of the things that you love doing, like traveling or cooking or um, running marathons. Maybe talk about like a little bit about why you started your business. People, it sounds cheesy, but people love to know the inspiration behind your business. Um, maybe, so for example, one of my friends who has a spray tan business, she started her spray tan business because she had a skin cancer scare and she had been going to tanning beds when she was younger. And, um, she really decided like, I want to number one, make women healthy and have them, you know, really spread the message of like skin cancer and melanoma and like the dangers of the sun. But number two, just make women feel beautiful. So she talks about that a lot in her story and on your about page, that should shine through. So share a photo of yourself, share a bio, both the professional side and the personal side. Um, And don't be afraid to like share all those personal details. So I'm just going to give you an example from my website. Let me just share my screen with you guys. Um, So my website is Sunny Star Marketing. You guys know I do marketing for beauty businesses. And a few years ago, four years ago, when I started my business, this, this type of website would have made me cringe. Like the idea that I would have the audacity to be front and center on my website, sharing a picture of me there, sharing a picture of me lower down, and then having a full page just devoted to me, um, sharing, you know, where I've been featured in. And then if you go to my blog, for example, oop, another picture of me, (laughs) another picture of me here. So I'm not saying this to, you know, show off of like, oh, look how many pictures I have. I'm sharing this to say like having you, having an about page on your website is so important. And if you're feeling um, anxious about that or worried that people are going to think that you're full of yourself, stop those thoughts because Clients will want to know about you before they book with you. It's true. If they if you're missing from your website, you're missing out on appointments. They want to know who you are. If they feel like you're the type of person that would understand them and communicate well with them, um, they want to feel like they know you personally before they book with you. And you can do that on your website. So the best way to do that is to have an about me page. And um Do not be worried. It doesn't need to be super professional. If you have some like headshots of you, definitely include them. But even just like a a casual photo taken with your phone can do such a great job of just like really sharing who you are. Um, So that is um, secret number one. Have an about page and share more of yourself on your website and it will help convert more visitors into clients. Just taking a sip of my apple spiced tea here. Um, 
Sharon's here. Hey, Sharon. Love that you showed up. Thank you for being here. Um, and Tracy says exactly what I did. I did have melanoma and to raise awareness. Oh, Tracy, I didn't know that. So Tracy does spray tanning. I love your message. And I hope, Tracy, that you are sharing that on your website um, because people really want to know like the story behind your business and really that your business is really coming from your heart, whether that's like your desire to make women feel beautiful or um, your desire to, you know, support other women and um, maybe your desire to help, you know, people feel confident in their own skin. So don't skip out on that part. Share that on your website. Um, okay, so that was secret number one. Uh, let me jump on ahead to secret number two to convert your website visitors into clients have reviews. Reviews. You know, when um, people leave you a review on either through email, maybe they email you telling you their feedback. Maybe they leave a review on, that was weird. Maybe they leave you a review on Google or Facebook or Yelp. Share that on your website. So social proof, that's what that's called. Social proof is the most powerful form of marketing. Because you are not telling people, I'm the best, I'm so talented, I'm great at customer service. Other people are selling you for you. So other clients are vouching for you. They're saying how much they appreciate you, how great of a communicator you are, you're a great listener, you're extremely talented, they're so happy with their hair, their nails, their makeup, their lashes, etc. Let your clients do the heavy lifting and sell for you. So um, part of that social proof that you can share on your website, of course, is like photos of your clients and um, the beautiful work that you've done on them. But remember that oftentimes before we um, decide to visit a business, we will go and research them. Like we'll go on Facebook to read the reviews there. We'll go on Google, see how many stars they have, go on Yelp. I'm sure you guys do that too. Make it easy for your website visitors to see your reviews by having either a page on your website or even just on your homepage or your about page, include your client reviews on there. So all you have to do, um, if you've got some reviews, um, go into Google, take a screenshot of their reviews and put that screenshot, that photo on a reviews page. If you've got some Yelp reviews, do the same thing, take a screenshot, put it on there, do it with Facebook. Or if you prefer, you can just copy paste. Copy paste their review, put the client's name under it, maybe include a photo of the clients. When you have reviews on your website, so many more people are going to trust you, know that they're in good hands with you, and then finally make that leap. Because it really is a leap when they decide to book with you for the first time. Make that leap to say, yes, Mel is the one that I'm going to trust my um, hair removal with, or Jen is the one that I'm going to trust my balayage with. So reviews are so important. Even if you don't have a ton of them, even just having like three or four reviews is great. Um, if you don't have reviews on social sites yet, not a problem. You, I'm sure you've received like private messages from clients saying how happy they were, or maybe you've received an email from a client after her appointment saying just how thrilled she is with her lashes or her brows. Um, email them back or message them back and just say, hey, would you mind if I screenshot this or copy paste this? Um, because I'd love to include you on my website. Everybody will be thrilled to oblige. They will love that you're asking them that. And um, if you know that you've got some clients who have loved what you've done with your treatments or your services, just send them a quick message and say, hey, would you mind just writing out like a two sentence review of me and my services here? Because I'd love to put you on my website. Let your clients do the heavy lifting. Take what they've said, take their, um, take their reviews, put them on your website. People do want to see that. They will go searching around. So instead of making them search for it, just put it right there front and center. Okay, um, awesome. Uh, let me see. It looks like, oh, Tracy says, 
with COVID, I private labeled a self tanning line too. Love that, Tracy. There's so, so much demand for self tanning um, right now during COVID. People are buying products at home. They want to do more of their beauty treatments at home. So I love, love that you did that. Rachel says, I'm nervous about starting at Google or Yelp due to people that may not be very nice and may not be telling the truth about their experience. Any advice there? Reviews can't be deleted, right? Great question, Rachel. Um, don't let that stop you. So Yelp, you can decide whether you want to do it or not, but I really recommend that you do have at least a Google profile. It's going to help you get found by so many more people. You're going to appear on Google Maps. You're going to appear on the Google homepage when people search um, for beauty businesses. So uh, you majority of the reviews that you will get will be overwhelmingly positive. They will be happy clients, especially if you follow up with them after their appointment to ask for a review, which hint, I recommend that you do. Um, so majority of people will be happy to leave your review and they will be glowing reviews. But once in a while, you might get a negative review. Has anyone here, just type in the comments, guys, if you've ever gotten a negative review, um, just type yes or um, if that's happened to you. It does happen. Not very often, but it does happen once in a while. If you've been around in business for a few years, it will happen probably at least once. But don't let that scare you. You can deal with negative reviews. So if people aren't happy, always respond back to them. Be extremely polite, friendly. Um, never respond back with sarcasm or anger. If you are angry, which is normal, Give yourself a few minutes, step away from your computer or your phone, and then come back to it after. Um, if it's something that happened in your salon that did actually happen, um, address that. Just say, hey, I'm sorry that this happened. As you know, this is what happened, and this is how I tried to resolve it. Um, if you would like to talk more about this issue, please um, email me or message me privately here. Um, that should be the end of it. And it's okay to have a negative review once in a while, Rachel, because that actually helps people who are researching you and looking at your reviews to say like, oh, you know, Rachel got a bad review, which happens. People are totally understanding. And she was very respectful, kind, understanding, and very responsive in her response. So people look closely at what your responses are to their reviews, and um, they'll be weighing that as well. So like I said, at least a Google, um, a Google page for your business where you can collect reviews and start getting found so important. And then later on, if you see that Yelp is something um, that people use in your city and a lot of your competitors are using, for sure you can look at Yelp as well. Um, Florenti Florentina's here. Hey, Florentina, thanks for being here. I love your name. Um, Victoria says, yes, I have had a bad review, but all the others are positive. So in general, they will be overwhelmingly positive. Okay. So that was, um, number one. Five, so we're going through, if you just jumped in, we're going through five secrets to making a website that converts visitors into clients. We just went through number one, which is have an about me page. And number two, which is include reviews. Tip number three to converting your website visitors into clients is collect email addresses. Collect people's emails when they get to your page. So here's the thing, 95% of your website visitors will not do anything. They won't book with you, you won't hear from them again, they won't buy anything from you. That's just a fact. Lots of people are just searching around, clicking around, seeing other businesses, um, they stumble on your website, etc. So that's normal, but it doesn't have to be the end. Those 95 out of 100 people, you can connect with them. You don't have to lose them. So my favorite way of doing that is by getting their email address so that I can connect with them, so that I can um, take that relationship that was just a random website visit and turn it into something more which could end up being a relationship that turns into a client. Um, so email is still amazing for marketing and communication. Um, it's not going away anytime soon, just like websites. 
So the best way that you can do this is through having something on your website that makes people say, oh, I want this. I want this and in return for it, they leave their email address there. So there's three ways that you can do this. You can do something like um, a first time client voucher or like a promo code or something like that that pops up on your website that says, hey, if you'd like to get um, a set of lashes done or if you're interested in a spray tan, et cetera, I have a new client promo that I'm doing, um, $5 off your first visit or um, you know, 20% off a retail product on your first visit, whatever, or you know, like a bring a friend special whatever type of promotion you want to do. Um, in order to get this promo code, they put in their name and their email address. So once they do that, you're gonna send it to them, you're gonna email it to them. But on top of that, now you have their email address in your database. So you can continue that relationship with them. Maybe they didn't book right away, but you send them a monthly email or a weekly email um, to your whole list. And that's another topic. But essentially, when you have email addresses, use them. Keep in touch with them. Send them um, pictures. Send them stories. Send them promotions. Um, keep them updated on what's happening in your salon. Send them educational things about how to do their hair or their makeup, etc. Keep in touch with your email list. Um, and eventually a lot of those people will end up converting to clients because they've seen your emails, they feel like they know you more, they've seen a promotion that they like, they've learned more about your services, they feel better prepared to book with you. Um, so you can do, like I said, something like a new client promo. You can do um, something like join my beauty club and um, when they join, you know, another pop-up comes up on their website that says like, join my beauty club. When they join, they put in their name and their email address and um, they can get some new client promotions from you. But on top of that, just tell them like, when you join my beauty club, you'll receive a once a month email with um, beauty tips, tutorials, um, videos, and freebies from me. So you can just tell them like, there's big benefits to being on my email list. Um, and last idea that I have for you for collecting email addresses is to offer something digital. So on my website, for example, I'm just going to share it with you guys real quick. So here's my website and um, I have an online business, so it's different, but this is something that you guys can do too. Here on my free goodies page on my website, you can see I've got a bunch of eBooks. Um, I've got different resources, different eBooks. You guys can do this too. And it's such a good way to like have people opt in to receive emails from you, etc. So what you can do is create a freebie. So create something like an eBook or a checklist or a guide. Um, one of my students, um, she actually, she's a hairdresser, and she created a guide to doing at-home braids. So three different braid styles that you can do at home. Um, she took pictures, she did a tutorial, she put it into like a nice, pretty PDF, and then people can download it. She includes a link on her Instagram bio, she has a pop-up on her website. People love it. And it shows just how much of an expert you are and how much free, useful information you're giving away it brands you really as this helpful expert and guide. It creates that relationship that people want to continue on and say, mm, you know what, I am going to book with her. Um, okay, so that is the third idea for you, which is collecting email addresses. Okay, and fourth idea, to convert your website visitors to clients X out the stock images. No more stock photos. So stock photos are those free website or those free photos that you can download on the internet or you can pay for them. You know, there's like iStockphoto.com, um, there's 2020, there's Unsplash. There's a lot of really pretty stock photos, but they don't belong on your website. Because here's the thing. 
and I think you guys know the, the photos I'm talking about. It's like, uh, you can download them and they've got like this impossibly beautiful model who's got like really shiny hair and people can tell that they're stock photos. People can tell that you didn't take those photos yourself, that you downloaded them off the internet. And it makes you look in genuine and it decreases trust a whole lot because people are thinking like, wait a minute, if she does lashes and brows and she's an expert, then why does she have to download pictures off the internet of other people's lashes and brows? Like, why doesn't she take her own photos? Same thing with hair. I've gone on so many hair salon websites where on the home page, like at the very top and center, it's like a stock photo of this woman who's like super skinny, is wearing like 80 pounds of makeup and has this like massive red hair. And it's clearly photoshopped too because no one has a nose that small. Um, so again, if if your hair salon and you're so, or if you're a hairstylist and you're so great at doing hair, why would you need to download a stock photo off the internet? That's what that's what people are thinking in the back of their minds when they see that. It just it doesn't spark trust. And I know why you do it. You do it because you're in a hurry. You just want to get your website done. You feel like none of your pictures are good enough. They're low quality. I get it. But when you have your own pictures that you took or a professional took on your website, it will increase trust like crazy. It really gives you that genuine, authentic look to your website. And people can really tell the difference. Um, so that goes for pictures of yourself too. So, um, you know that I love the idea of having an about page on your website, include a photo of you. So invest a little bit of money or time, get some headshots done. Um, so I know I haven't, like, I've been, I'm trying to get through all this stuff, all these five ideas quickly. Um, so I haven't been stopping, but I'm going to sp- Pause here for a second. I'm going to drink some tea, but tell me, have you guys ever gotten headshots done? Like, have you ever worked with a photographer or maybe even a family friend or something like that who's got a good camera and like taken pictures of you? Let me know in the comments if you've ever gotten that done. If it's, if it's no, type no. If it's yes, type yes. Um, I am a huge believer in getting photos of yourself done. It doesn't have to cost a lot of money. You can, usually you can get it done for like $200 or less. Um, but having those photos on your website is just going to just make it over the top beautiful. Like branded, it's going to share more of you. And those photos don't just have to be of you. You can book a photographer in for like an hour or two. Have them come into your salon, um, get them to take pictures of some of your clients, of you like working on your clients, doing a treatment or a service, Um, some before and after pictures, photos of your space. People really want to see your space. Um, And you can get all that done usually for $200 or less. And I know that is an investment. I personally think it's worth it, but I know what some people do is they, they barter. They say like, hey... Um, if, you know, if, if your one hour photo shoot normally costs $200, why don't we do a barter and I'll give you a $200 gift card to my salon or, um, you know, I'll do your hair for free or I'll give you a set of lash extensions, whatever it is that you do. So I know that bartering is also a great way to do it. Okay. So let's see who's had their photos done. Justine has love that. Uh, Nanny says no. Nanny, apart from um, getting a professional to take your pictures, one thing that I've done that's actually worked really well is I just set up a photo shoot day and my boyfriend took pictures. I literally just gave him my iPhone. We rented an Airbnb, but I would recommend you do it in like your studio or your room or your salon. Um, And just have someone like take the pictures for you, write down a list of the photos that you want to get taken. Um, you know, do your hair and makeup that day. And those photos are so helpful. Uh, Tracy hasn't gotten pictures done yet. Um, Neither has Stacy. 
but I hope that you guys will seriously think about it because having those types of photos on your website is just going to just make it so much better. Having great photos is the, often the difference between an okay website and a great one. Uh, Jen says, yes, I love my headshot photos. So worth it, right? It is an investment, but it's such a good investment. Um, Alexia hasn't yet. Um, Victoria has. And Jen says, I got my photos by trading too. Love that. Jen, what did you, what do you trade for your photos? I'm guessing that you did the photographer's hair. That's what I'm guessing. But just let us know in the comments. Um, Tracy says, my son did mine and did a great job. Sometimes people can surprise you. Like I didn't think that my boyfriend knew anything about photography. And then we booked this Airbnb. We got the photos done and they looked great, honestly. I edited them a little bit. Um, I used some editing apps just to like brighten them up and stuff. But um, honestly, like you can, you can do it on a budget too. But having those photos of yourself is just gonna make you feel so much more confident and it's gonna give your website just this other, like I said, next level. Okay, so that was number four. And number five, final secret to creating a website that converts visitors into clients is having a menu of your services and your treatments with pricing and then in brackets and make it easy to book. <laughs> um, I think that this is not as much of a problem as it used to be. I think that most people know this, but you really need to, you should have your pricing on your website. Do not hide it. Um, if you're, if you're scared of showing your pricing on your website, just ask yourself, why am I scared? Is it because I feel like people don't want to spend that? Is it because I feel like my pricing is just so much different from my competitors? Ask yourself that, wipe that fear away and just remind yourself that clients really do want to see your pricing. If you don't have it on there, you're missing out on bookings. It's as simple as that. Um, so uh, I recommend that you have a page on your website with a list of your services, um, your treatments, have some photos to give examples of what those different treatments look like. For example, um, <clears throat> if you have different types of facials, this is what I would love. I go on a lot of um, estheticians or like a facial spa website and they tell you, you know, maybe they have like four different types of facials but they just have the words. They just have it written down, what the different facials are, what's included. I would love to see pictures. I would love to see in photos, maybe what those different treatments look like. And they, they don't have to be exact. They can just be representations, but people want to see the difference between your services. They wanna see the difference if you have different types of lash extensions, like what Russian volume is, or like what classic is. Um, if, you know, if you do nails and you're talking about, um, like acrylic nails or dip or gel nails, you know that, but a lot of people don't know what the difference is. So include photos to explain that. Um, and on that page, on that services page, menu page, include your pricing. So even if you've got a range, like starting at or between these prices, Put that in there. Um, and then also for each of your services or treatments, explain it in a short, snappy little sentence or paragraph in a way that really makes people want to book. So you're not just talking about, you know, how it works or what the ingredients are or like what technically the treatment is like. I want you to talk about why people would want to get this treatment or service done. So really talk about benefits instead of features. So just as an example, <clears throat> brow lamination, which is something that's like blowing up right now. Um, instead of saying on your services page, like talking about brow lamination, instead of saying something like, it's a semi-permanent way to straighten and shape your eyebrows. You could say something like, get fluffy, fuller eyebrows for just with just your natural brows. They're fuller than you think. It lasts six to eight weeks and gives you a bold brow look you're after by relaxing your brow hairs and pulling them, 
putting them into the right place. So yes, you're talking a little bit about how it works, but more than anything, you're starting with the benefit, which is why do people get brow lamination? Because they want fluffy, fuller eyebrows. They just want that bold brow look. So whatever your services are, when you're describing them, talk about the benefits, like what your client is going to get from that. Okay, so we just went through um, the five things that your website absolutely needs in order to convert your website visitors into clients. So just to kind of like go through those five things again, number one, have an about page on your website and make your website super personal. Include those details, include info about you. Number two, include reviews. So whether it's from Google or Yelp or Facebook and you just like do a screenshot or whether you're gonna like take some emails and or social messages and turn those into reviews, put them on your website because people are looking for those. Number three, collect email addresses. So 95% of the people on your website won't end up booking with you, but it doesn't have to end there. When you collect their email address, you can continue the relationship with them and then create that rapport that's gonna help them want to book with you in the future. Number four, no stock images. So please don't download photos of hair and makeup and nails and lashes from the internet. Use your own photos. So take your photos, put them on your website. And my biggest tip for this is to actually book a professional photographer to take some photos of you and your salon and your clients and your treatments. And then finally, include a menu with pricing and make it really easy to book with you. So of course, include online booking on your website. I forgot to mention that, but kind of goes without saying you need online booking. Include your pricing, include photos of your different treatments, and really when you're talking about your treatments and services, start with the benefits. Start with why your clients should book with you. Um, okay, so those were the five secrets to making a website that converts your visitors into clients. Um, the last thing that I wanted to touch on for anyone that doesn't have a website yet. So I know we had a few people on here. Let me just see. Teresha didn't have a website yet. Um, Alexia, uh, Rusby. Okay, so we've got a few people on here who don't have websites yet. If you don't have a website, I would say for sure make a plan to get one set up. It will help your business so much. You'll have more people finding you. You'll have more people booking with you. You'll be able to really tell the story of your business. If you don't have a website yet, here's three things to do this week to get it set up. Number one, choose your website builder. So, you know, there's so many different places where you can start to build a website. Um, you can use like Squarespace and WordPress and Weebly and GoDaddy and Website Builder. There's just like unlimited and it's tough to know, right? First step is to choose a website builder. So I personally use Squarespace, but it does tend to be a little more complicated if you're not kind of more design or you don't have the patience to learn it. Um, if you just want something simple and you want my recommendation, I like either Weebly or Wix. So those, one of those two website builders, love it. It like, they are so easy. They've got great templates. They make it really super duper simple to get a website started. Um, Jen says Wix is awesome. I love how easy it is. Yeah. Wix is amazing. Um, Marie asked, what is your app for editing photos? So I actually use an app called Snapseed, um, S-N-A-P-S-E-E-D. Snapseed is so great. You can just take any photo from your phone and really edit and fine tune all the details, make it brighter, make it stand out, add filters. Um, I use it for pretty much all my photos. And so that's what I would really recommend. Um, Julianne says, I love Wix. Yeah, Wix is great. So um, Wix, or if you want my personal preference, I love Weebly because I find that it's actually even simpler than Wix. So one or the other, um, 
don't get stuck on that part. Um, okay, so that's step one. If you want to get your website built this week, choose your website builder. Step two, here's something that I've learned about overwhelm when you're trying to do something for your business, especially for like marketing and online stuff. You get overwhelmed, you feel like it's too much, and it's hard to move forward because you you just feel like, I don't know how to do this. You start blanking. You're just looking at a blank screen. You don't know what to do. That happens a lot of times when you're trying to build something like a website, when you're starting from zero. So my suggestion is before you like get started with Weebly or Wix, that kind of thing, open up Google Drive and create a folder on Google Drive or Dropbox if that's what you prefer, but I love Google Drive. And start putting stuff in it. So start collecting those photos that you've taken. If you've gotten your headshots done, put them in there. Start collecting content that you're later going to put on your website. Um, so put all that in there and open up a Google Doc and start writing some contents. Like just start writing like an about me page. Start writing about talking about your services. Like have a doc where you start describing your services. It's so much easier to break it down into two stages, like content and then design. If you try to make a website, and I'm sure this has happened to you guys before, you try to make a website or a new page on your website, you open up Wix or Weebly or whatever it is you're using, and you just are staring at a blank page and you're like, I don't even know what to write on here. I don't know what to put on there. Make it easy on yourself. First, create the content, like get your photos, get your text, write it all down in like a doc, and then work on the design part. Then open up Weebly or Wix, and then start copy pasting in that text, putting in the photos, making it look pretty. That's my suggestion. That's something that's helped me so much. I use that trick. I guess you could call it a trick. It's so easy. I use that even when I'm writing emails to my list. Instead of like opening up my email editor and like trying to write it and design it at the same time and feeling that stress, I actually start on Google Docs. I write down some ideas. I refine it. I make it look better. And then I copy paste that into the email. It just, it helps so much. Um, okay. And then last tip that I have for you, if you want to get your website started this week, I actually have a free resource for you. So it is called the, um, the, oh my gosh, I can't believe I even forgot the name of it. It's the ultimate getting started guide for your beauty biz website. So it's the no sweat beauty biz website starter guide. That's what it's called. It's an ebook and guide and planner all kind of wrapped into one that I just made this week. I actually just published it yesterday um, and it's brand new. It's really juicy and it's going to help you take the next steps to actually get your website started. So if you don't have a website yet and you're feeling like, okay, at this point, I really need a website, this guide is going to help you figure out the things to do this week to get it started. So I'm gonna help you choose a website builder, figure out the content that's gonna be on your pages, figure out your design, so what colors and photos you're gonna use. Um, it's gonna actually have a template in there to help you write your about page if you want to um, create a bio about yourself, highly recommended. Um, so it's got all that great stuff in it. To grab this starter guide, you can go to sunnystorm.marketing slash websites. So it's absolutely free. It's gonna help you get all that stuff sorted out. And um, I'm really, really excited to share it with you guys because I think that this is going to help so many people who feel overwhelmed with websites to take their first steps and just get it get it started and get it launched because having a website is going to help your business so, so much. Okay, so let me just see. That's it for the training part, guys. But um, let me just see if you guys had any questions about what I went through. Um, 
Stacy says, if you're a member of Associated Skin Care Professionals, they have a free website with membership. Oh, that's cool. Love that. So the things that I'm talking about today in today's training, you can use those on pretty much any website builder. Um, these ideas, you can use them any type of website that you're creating. The foundations are always the same. Like what goes into having a high converting website is always the same no matter what kind of builder you're using. Um, Tracy says, thanks, Stephanie. Have to go. Aw, thank you, Tracy. Loved having you on here. Thank you for stopping by. I loved your questions too. Uh, Victoria says, Google Photos is great. You can do a quick search to find photos or create folders. Love Google. Yeah, Google, well, Google Drive is like where I do my business. All of my docs, all of like my emails, content for my website is all in Google. So it's a great way to like put photos in, share them, create documents. It just makes my wife, my wife, makes my life so much easier. Um, Julianne says, will there be a replay? Yes, this is recorded. So after I'm done, you can come back and rewatch it after. Um, Jen says, that's a great tip. I had such writer's block when writing on my actual website, right? And this is the same for anything, like even like Instagram captions. You know how when you find a great photo and you post on Instagram and then you're on the Instagram app, like trying to think like, oh, what do I write? It's a lot of pressure. So actually I even write my Instagram captions in a separate doc and then I copy paste them into Instagram. Just you only, your brain can only think about one thing at a time. So like when you try to like, make a website. Your brain can't think about understanding how the website builder works, trying to design it and make it look pretty and write content and, you know, the actual text of your website that sounds good. Your brain cannot think about those three things all at once. So just break it down. Just start with the content, open up a doc, write it in, and then later on you can copy paste it into your website. All right. Thanks so much, Jen. Everybody, thank you so much for joining me today. I've loved doing this training. I hope that it helps. Um, you can watch the replay later. I hope that um, it's given you some ideas for what to do for your website to make it um, not only beautiful, but also really work for your business to refer clients to you. Because at the end of the day, your website can be a huge asset. It can refer you clients every day as long as you set it up well so that it has certain elements that take people from visitor to interested to actually taking action and booking with you. So hope that you guys all have a beautiful rest of your day. I've loved doing this. Thank you for your questions, your comments, and I will see you all again very soon. Have a great day, everyone.